Well, this is it, guys. The final round of the bank box battle with Nichols. Hey everybody, it's Rob with Rob Finds Treasure, and like I said in the intro, it's round 10 to decide the winning bank for nickel boxes. You'll recall, if you've been following the series, right now, 32.9 points per box, Chase is in first, with B of A not far behind at 30.4, and Wells Fargo keeping it pretty tight at 29.3. Wells Fargo has still yet to find a Buffalo nickel. We still haven't found a V-nickel out of these 27 boxes. Could there be one in these? You never know until you get into it. Long story short though, Chase averaging more than two and a half points per box more than the second place box with nine boxes in is gonna need to be beaten by like 25 points to even have a chance to lose its seat at the top. We're gonna kick it off with Wells Fargo since it is in last. Then we're gonna go with B of A, second, since it's second, and then they'll give us something to see if Chase can close it out. I've already checked them all for enders, at least on the top couple of rows on these boxes. And of course, I can always see all the enders on the one side of all of these. And uh, yeah, looks like a short box, but it's just kind of funky the way that it's positioned. So let's get into it. First roll of the Wells Fargo box, and it kicks us off with a 49 nickel. Is it a D? It's a Philly. Okay guys, we're on roll six and I'm a little excited. Look at the nickel I just uncovered is. A 1950. Key date, 1950 D. One of the absolute hardest nickels to find other than a 39 D as well. I have found a 50 D once and I have found two other 1950s. Only three 1950 nickels I've ever found in probably 200 nickel boxes. Will it be a 1950D key date? I think it's just a Philadelphia. It is just a Philadelphia. But it is a 1950 nickel nonetheless. What a great find. Not a key date, still. You don't find very many 1950 nickels in any boxes. And we're only six rolls in. Looks like Wells Fargo's trying to do something here. Roll number nine, another 40s nickel, and check it out. It's another 49. So we've gotten two 49s and a 50 in this box. That's a good sign if they're all gonna be grouped right around 1950. It's just a 49 Philadelphia, though. Roll well, number 10, guys, and we have another good score here, at least for what I can see so far. I haven't picked it out yet, but I saw 39 as I slid this one down. So as you know, once again, 39 with a mint mark, D or S. D would be awesome. S would be just fine. Will we have a mint mark on this worn 39? We do not. Let's look at it under the scope first and foremost to make sure there is no mint mark. And there isn't. A little bit of damage right there, which made me think there might have been at one point, but there's not. Let's see if there's any doubling on this bad boy. Remember on the 39P, you're looking for doubling on the word Monticello and on five cents. And it's pretty pronounced, so you should be able to see it pretty good, but this coin's pretty beat up. Well, that's why you look. You never know if you're gonna find the one. 39 nickel in the box for finding two key date years, along with some 49s, which is also a known variety. So that's a pretty good start. Let's see what else this box has. Roll number 16. We had an old Jefferson Ender, 1940. And it's a 40S. And it's a 40s nickel. All right, let's find some more. Same exact roll. And we've got a 51. Is it a D? It is. Nice find. Semi-key date. 51 D. And again, another nickel right in this 50s part of the years. So that's a good find. And we're only 16 rolls in. 
Pull number 17, and we've uncovered a rated edge. Probably going to be a foreign. Maybe a pence. Cayman Islands. Queen Elizabeth II on there, 1982. That's a cool find. I always love when I can find a foreign in a U.S. nickel roll. Roll number 26. Got another 40s nickel. 1940, Philadelphia. Roll 28. Another 40s nickel out of Philly. Roll 32, guys, and this is going to be an absolute first for me. It's damaged, but it's a second 1950. Philadelphia. I don't want to sound discouraged. That's still cool. Two 50s nickels in the same box. Literally three nickels behind it. Another 39. Another 39 Philly. Any doubling? I don't see what I want to see on it. So I'm going to say no, but that's two 39s and two 50s in the same box. Roll 33, just laid them out, and look what popped up. Canadian 1971. That's one of the older Canadians that I have found. I don't find them too old, and it's not in bad shape either. Second foreign of the box. Same roll as the Canadian, and yet another 51. And it's another 51D, semi-key date. Wow. Roll 36, and I think we're gonna score our first silver of the box. Gotta be. 1945, Philadelphia. We got some silver in this box. Roll 38, and I laid him out, and I thought I saw, yeah, right there. It's gonna be newer, 1993. Third foreign of the box, second Canadian. Roll 39, a 1947, Philadelphia. Roll 44, and yet another 49. And this one is a Denver, so we'll check it for the 49 D over S. Uh, not seeing it with that lighting, but we'll wipe it down, take a look. If it's anything, I'll let you know. Cracked open roll 45, and I think we've got another foreign and possibly a silver. We do. Singapore, 20 cents. That's four foreigns in that box. And while I have it here, let's take a look at this odd one. Just mistoned. All right, let's get back to the hunt. Same roll as that foreign. And we've got another 1939 looking at us. Philadelphia. Roll 46, and we've got another 1940 here. And it's a San Francisco. And I think I see another old one right there. 52. And I think it's 52D. It is. And you know what? Now that I think about it, a lot of the finds have been on the right side of the box. And I always wonder if they loaded the box like this or like this, and because it's been heavily loaded on this side with fines, I'm thinking they load it like this, and I'm thinking we caught the end of a run of good fines, and then the new part was pretty light. Roll number 47, and I think my theory's right, because I just pulled out of this roll two more 52s, a D and a P. And look what I see again, another 1939. Philadelphia. Let's see if it has any doubling. Uh, 
No such luck, but this box has been loaded with early Jeffersons. Only one silver, and again, no buffaloes. Maybe there's still a little bit of luck left in this box, though. Three more rolls on the hot side. So let's see what we find. Roll 49 is going to give us another silver, and I had a feeling by the edge it was silver, but I wasn't sure. I laid it down, and as soon as I did this, that's pretty obvious. And it's going to be a Philadelphia minted war nickel from 1942. That's not a year you get too often. 42P, first year war nickel, transition year. Wow. All right, we'll add that to the collection. It's not in bad shape. Let's find some more goodies. Same roll a few coins later. The 1948 Philadelphia. Just laid out roll 50, guys, and I flattened them, and I think I see a 39 back there. And it looks like it's in pretty good shape. Eh, it's not as in good shape as I thought, but it is a 39 for sure. Is there a mint mark on it? There is not. But let's check it for doubling, because it's actually in pretty good shape. We couldn't score any uh, doubling or mint mark, but yet another 30s nickel. Well, we finally finished on that box of Wells Fargo nickels, guys, and you know what? It was a dandy. Several in the 50s. I think with the two 1950s, there was 20. Nice amount in the 40s. Nine. We had five 39s, all Philadelphia, two 50s, Philadelphia, and two war nickels. On top of that, six 2009s, I always find the Ds, can't actually find the Ps out here, and four foreigns, representing three different countries. On top of that, we found some really nice coins up here, 61 and 82, a little bit of scratches, but they're hard to find in good shape. Another 82, P, even better shape, and then I pulled out this 1984 Philadelphia, because it's in really good shape, and there's some slight doubling on the United States of America. It's going to score a lot of points. So Wells Fargo didn't go down without a fight. I'll plug it in the stat sheet. But we're going to move on to B of A next and see if they can have a great showing to make their bid to catch Chase as well. Roll number two of the B of A box. We've got our first score here. 1946, Denver. On the board, early. Now let's be on the board often. Roll number six. I just found a really nice 1958p. Only 17 million of these minted. So as far as the upper 50s, the 58p is one you want to find and in good shape. That's about a 50 cent nickel, 10 times face. We'll take that. But I bring in also because I found a 1946 out of Philly. So that's two 46s and a 58p. Roll 12 is going to give us a 1941 nickel out of San Francisco. Hunting roll 13, guys, and they seem to surprise me every single time. I never see them until they slide down. Boom. It's reverse facing us. I don't see a mint mark unless it's light there, but it looks like it's probably a Philadelphia mint buffalo nickel. Most likely a Philadelphia mint. And I may not get a year on that. Maybe I will. Let me put it under the microscope and see if we can see either a mint mark on the other side or a date on this side. Put it right here. Definitely no mint mark. And... Man, it looks like it's either a 1918 or a 1928 or a 1923. I don't think it's a 1913, I guess. I look at the back one more time. It is a Type 2 if it is a 1913. I don't think it is. Let me see if I can look at that under the loop. I believe that's either a 3 or an 8 because it looks closed down here. 
And I can't tell if that's a loop or if that's just a 1918. Let me do a little looking at that and I'll bring you back in. Well, as luck would have it, I really can't make it out and it is almost legible. My best guess is a 1928 Philadelphia, which I don't need. I also don't need a 23 Philadelphia or an 18 Philadelphia or even a 1913 Type 2 Philadelphia. So because of that, I think I'm going to go ahead and nick date it. In certain lights, it looks like it could also be a 38. I don't know, man. It's hard to tell. That third digit is impossible. We know the first two are 19, and it looks like the last one's either an 8 or a 3. Best guess. That third one is damaged. It could be a 30-something. Could be a teens, or it could be a 20-something. Well, that covers all the years, I guess. <laughs> all right. We're going to nick date it anyway, but very lightly. Well, we were right about it having a loop on the last digit. I thought it was an 8. It ended up being a 6. 1916. And for those that know, there is a double die variety in 1916. This looks funny, but I've examined it. It is not a DDO. But man, had it been a 1916 DDO that I nicodated, man, that would have been a foolish move on my part. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. I have a 1916 Philadelphia. Now I've got one nicodated, unfortunately. Still, that's an old Buffalo, and we'll take it. Roll number 27 is going to give us a uh, Canadian Ender. Unbelievable. Hardly ever find Canadian coins in my nickels, and we've got an Ender. Same roll as the Canadian Ender, and we do have a 40s nickel. It's only a 48p but it's still a find. Well, we finished running that box of B of A nickels and you know what? It got really cold after that buffalo. The good news is we did find a 1916 buffalo. Had to nick -a -date it, I know, but it is what it is. We also found four in the 40s and two, four, six, 10 in the 50s, along with 309s and a foreign. The buffalo is gonna help out, but it's gonna be an average box. I'm pretty certain that Wells Fargo has already passed B of A at this point. And now it's up to Chase to have a pretty good box to ward off the threat of Wells Fargo. So let's get into it. We're on roll 20 of the Chase box. We have our first 40s nickel of the box. And for needing to be hot, it's cold. It does have a Denver mint. We also have a couple of 09s and four from the 50s. Five from the 50s, sorry, there's two 59s. So it's not like it's not scoring points, just not many. Better pick up the pace, Chase. Roll 25, and this box is heated up. You can see in the last several rolls, we've added some coins to the top, but I bring you in because take a look at this slide down job. And there's a mint mark on it. A Denver mint mark. So we've got a buffalo in the box. It's got a Denver mint. It's got decent detail, not the greatest. It's gonna be tough to see if there's a date. <laughs> and there's not. So, hopefully, we might have an overdate on a 1918 over 17. We know it's not a three-legged or a three and a half. It's got all its legs. But it does have a Denver Mint. I'll have to look under the loop and the microscope and get back to you guys. So, I can't quite get a date off it. There's no way. I've checked every possible way, different lighting. I mean, the scratches on the date section are throwing it off to even have a chance. Too many different ways to look at it. And after that last fiasco, I'm afraid to nick a date it, but you know what? We gotta do it, we gotta know it. And if it ends up being something great like a 1913D, Oh well, you know what? The nickel date takes a lot of the value away, but $120 nickel times 10 or 20% still worth more than a dollar it is now. So we're gonna go for it and see what we find. Well, as luck would have it, we just found the third most expensive nickel other than the varieties, is like the heirs of the Buffalo series. Less than four million minted, guys. Take a look at it. 1914. Let me see if I can get it in better lighting for you. 
You can see it right there. We had that Nicodate on there for like less than five seconds. But that's what Nicodate does, man. It's meant to wear it away. And we've got a 1914 right there. Denver Mint. In G4 condition, this nickel fetches 90 bucks. Now, the back is G4. The front's probably about good. And now that we've nickedated it, we're only going to see probably 20% of the value. Still a hard nickel to find to complete books. So I'm okay with nickedating it. A 1914 D nickel in the box. Third best nickel you can get other than the over mint marks and legs missing and things like that. Crazy. That is probably my best nickel find in a box of nickels in a while. Why couldn't we just see the date? Oh well, I'm still happy to have it. 1914 Denver Mint Nickel. And I bet you I need it for my set. Page one, we don't have a 14D. It's nickedated, but we got one now. Figured I'd take a page out of the red book and just show you why I was excited about it. 1914D, 3.9 million minted in G4 condition, 90 bucks. Obviously, variety two of the 13D and 13S is more. And if we omit double dies, overdates, things like that, it is the third most expensive nickel behind the variety twos of 13 DNS. $90 nickel. Unbelievable. Would have been nice to have the clean version of it. But can't do all what you can't do. All you can do is move forward. I didn't have it before this box, and now I've got one. Roll 50 of the box. We're actually gonna get our second 40s nickel of the box. It's a 47P, just like the other one. What a slow box. We did find an awesome Buffalo. You better have three or four key dates in here, or it might be over. So we finished on that box of nickels, guys, and um, not a very good box, mind you. We did find a 1914 D Buffalo nickel, crazy. We had a nickel dated, unfortunately. But outside of that, two 40s, handful of 50s, and a couple 09s. There's no way this bank box is gonna score a lot of points. I have to make it official, but I'm pretty certain Wells Fargo might have took this in the last box. Well, it's official. Wells Fargo sticks up a 68 point box. Chase puts out a 21 point box. And B of A finishes with 26. So pretty much a no contest on the last round. Wells Fargo took it easily. And guys, it got enough points to now average 33.2 compared to Chase's 31.7 and B of A's 30.0. So at the end of the day, Wells Fargo ended up taking the victory in nickels. And I really thought my Chase Banks that I've always hunted had the best nickels. Mind you, pretty consistent boxes until the end, of course. But even if they had gotten 11 more points on an average box, or even 12 more points, that's really only one or one and a half points more box, and it still probably wouldn't have won. So that being said, makes me think I gotta start considering getting more boxes at Wells Fargo. We'll have to see how this goes. Hopefully you enjoyed this final battle of the nickel bank box battle series. We do plan on doing an upgraded scoring system as well, like the pennies and having another series started eventually, but this one's over for now. Congratulations, Wells Fargo. Good job, Chase. Not too bad, B of A. If you enjoyed this Battle of the Banks box series with nickels, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting, and thanks for watching.